Big Guy Ben here for Wally's Malls, and one of the questions we get all the time is, how do I become a vendor? Well, before you become a vendor at our mall or any other mall, there's a few things you need to consider. The first thing you should really consider is, do you like this? Do you like buying and selling or finding and repurposing or making and selling items? Because if you don't enjoy doing it, it'll show in your work. All right, well, you love doing this kind of stuff. We love doing it as well here too. This is more than just finding it and putting a tag on it. This is a small business where you'd be expected at almost any mall to come in at least once or twice a month, re-straighten your booth up, restock it, and stuff like that. And by restocking it, that means you come in here treating it like a business, bringing new product in, checking it out, straightening things up, and putting time in. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme, no matter how many TikTok videos you see or internet things where they say get rich overnight. This is a business, a small business, and you grow it one booth at a time. To make it a full-time job, you have to treat it like a full-time job. You get what you put in out of this business. Before you start running a booth at our mall or any mall, you should walk the mall. Walk other malls. Get an idea of what you like, what you don't like, what the mall sells. And get a good concept of uh, how you want to run your business. And the best way to do that is go out and check a bunch of malls. I drive all over the Midwest here and whenever I'm around I try to check out other malls for ideas and advice and what I like and what I don't like and get feedback for my booths. And now that you found the mall you like you got to figure out the space and size you need. So if we're looking at the showcase back here it's a four foot wide six foot tall. I'll flip the camera around. You're thinking well I got enough to fill that once. Well that's great. Before you fill any space or any space on a mall you should have enough product to fill it up about three to four times. So you should have about that amount of product if you're filling up and running one case. Because most malls will have anywhere from a two to four month commitment to move in. And part of that will be having product to replace when you sell an item, having product to rotate in when something doesn't sell. So you can't just have enough to fill it one time when you're gonna be here two, four, six months, or even make a year commitment out of trying your business. You gotta have the product on hand already to grow your business. All right, so you found the mall you liked. You looked at the rules and read over the release. You have your products ready, and now your next step is to price your items. People ask us all the time about, you know, how do I look this up or that up? Biggest two tools to any vendor out there is Google Lens and eBay sold listings. Those are great tools for you to use to figure out how you should price your items. You can also use them when you're figuring out how I should buy items. If you're in a mall or a sale or anywhere and you see an item marked $15 and you check Google Lens or eBay sold and they sell for 10, eBay is now saying that that's a high price. You should probably not buy it from that booth. So as a vendor, you wanna make sure you're buying right and offering value. When people come out to these malls, they are looking for a treasure or a deal. So you can't mark an item 20 bucks if they can buy it on eBay for 10. People are looking for a value. They're spending their valuable time to come out to the mall that you're at. You need to find treasures at a valuable price for them. You got your stuff priced. You got your mall picked out. You got your booth picked out and the spacing on that. The next step is to stay committed. This is not get rich quick overnight. Um, your ideal goal should be three times your rent. So if you're running a booth that's $100 a month, your goal should be every month to get $300 in sales. Because there will be commissions at different malls, there'll be credit card fees at different malls, and then your rent itself. So if you're in this to make money, which you should be, uh, you always wanna strive for three to one ratio. That's how uh, most vendors will do it. That's how I personally do it. When I'm examining a product or a line or a booth that I'm doing, I need to see a three to one ratio. Now you're probably saying, Big guy, Ben, that sounds like a work. Well, it is actually work. Um, here at our mall, this location, we have 150 vendors. They work really hard to find product, bring them in at fair prices to give you deals. So if your mindset is, well, I just want to throw it on my shelf one time and get a check at the end of the month, you're probably not going to be successful in this venture. You might be better off as the type of person that wholesales out stuff. If you're not committed to doing the work, bringing items in you won't make money you'd be better off wholesaling it to a vendor that would do it because there's a lot of work involved and a lot of time involved just like any small business to be successful 
you got to have the time and commitment to make sure that your venture inside of a business like this will be successful. So don't believe the hype videos out there or the programs where they're going to instantly make you a successful vendor at a vintage or antique mall overnight. Because the only key to success is commitment and time. If you're committed to your business and you have the time to run it and find product and bring it in, you can be successful. There's nothing else that will supplement commitment and time in your business other than commitment and time. There's no hidden secret or you know special program that you can buy to just uh, surpass uh, what's needed to run a small business. So, you found your mall, you wrote over their rules because they own the business, it is their rules and how they operate. You found your space, you got your products ready, and you want to start your business. Next step, getting with that mall, signing a lease, staying committed to your project. Good luck out there. Keep this hobby growing for the next generation of collectors. Also, you're going to have to be your own advertising agency. You're going to have to be placing ads on Marketplace, having a social media presence, using TikTok and Instagram as well. You have to reach the masses. There's no magic TV or radio commercial or magic one place that you can put it because you guys are doing so much in your booth and there's so many different vendors doing so many different things. Each vendor needs to go out there and explain and advertise and show off the beautiful creations and products they have for sale.